Okay, so I have everything resting in pretty much its final resting spot. It's ready to be tacked up. I was just doing some final checks to make sure everything's just where I want it to be. The only main difference between this hitch and the old hitch, other than this one of course is going to be 10 times stronger, is the 2 inch receiver is probably going to be about a quarter inch higher than the old hitch. So it shouldn't make a big deal, but it's going to be recessed just the same as the old one and it's going to be, you know, of course direct center line, which that was kind of tricky to get. I got these Harbor Freight uh, magnetic angle placement things, whatever you want to call them. And they've been really crummy. The, magnet, the magnets on them are really weak. Of course, they're pretty cheap as well, but uh, this was kind of the perfect use for it because I didn't need a super powerful magnet, but it allowed me to hold this two inch receiver at a 90 degree angle to that main crossbar. So now I'm ready to tack everything up. Gonna use the stick welder. I am gonna be burning in uh, 6011s. Of course, this isn't gonna be the final um, welding of this whole thing. I'm just going to weld it up enough so that I can bring it inside and work on it in the garage because it's 97 degrees out right now, not including humidity. Uh, so it should be a bit cooler in there and it'll definitely allow me to make some cleaner looking welds. So let me get welding here. It is freaking hot out here, man, but on the bright side, I got half the welding on this thing done. When I started welding on this thing, I was using 6011s, and 6011s, I have a very difficult time running 6011s, which don't really have too much experience. I'm trying to learn. I figured this would be a good project for it. I'm okay with the, the flat welds, but when you get to uphill, uphill running 6011 is definitely tricky. Uh, I, I, I wasn't mastering it, I was getting like big puddles and then I went inside, cooled off for a little while and went on YouTube, tried to learn some other techniques and I learned that uh, there are two techniques that you can implement with 6011 that will help it run smoother going uphill. One of them is where you go up and come back down a little bit, go up, come back down a little bit, go up, come back down a little bit. And I tried that a little bit, it was working okay. Another technique that I learned was uh, it's called an inverted T where you go up, come back down, and then go side to side. It's kind of the same principle. But stick welding in general, uphill, for me, is really challenging. It's challenging to control the heat, you know, figure out how far you want to have the electro away from the piece that you're welding. So this is definitely going to have to be something that I'm going to have to come back in the shop and just, you know, practice this when I get a free moment. But, I mean, this is a pretty good project for me to learn on because... It's, I mean, it's a trailer hitch, it's pin and slot construction, so, I mean, for the most part, this is just really locking it together, and, you know, it's not like it's a 3G pipe weld test or anything like that. So I'll show you some of the welds. Uh, so, yeah, like I was saying, I started off with 6011s and then everything else, uh, and then I pretty much welded over everything with uh, 7018s, and 7018s are a lot smoother to run. That bead looks a little cold, but... There was a big gap in there, and I got in there real good with the 6011, so I'm not too concerned about that. A little bit of porosity right there. That's that's an okay weld. And that's okay. It's You know, could have done a better job tying it in with the sides there. This is one of my best welds right here. A little bit of uppercut, but what's going to happen is I'm going to put another plate or two on here because that was the design of the old one, so there's going to be more bracing going on there. That's a decent looking weld on top. These are just like Batista welds. I mean, there's no porosity, but they're just not pretty. They're definitely strong. If you look from the top, you can see how much weld is in there. So there's a good, maybe, I don't know, quarter inch 
quarter inch of weld from that corner coming out. So, I mean, there's there's a lot of weld holding this thing on here. It's just, it's not super pretty. But you know what? It's going to be under the truck. Nobody's ever really going to notice it. The first thing they're going to notice is that hitch. And it's going to be painted over anyway. So, you know what? <sighs> no big deal. The only way to learn is to do it. And this is a good project to learn on. So, like I said, I got about half the welds done on this. I got to flip it over now finish off the other side which I probably should have started on that side anyway because that's the side that's nobody nobody's ever really gonna see unless you're going underneath the truck so yeah I'll finish welding this thing up and then we'll probably call it a day because it's uh, about 90 degrees out and uh, I'd like to go swimming and cool down what I'm working on right now there's two more parts that I need to finish this and that's the additional supports that I plan to weld onto this portion of the bracket and I need to work on the main hitch and I need to uh, brace that with some plate as well as make spots for your, you know, somebody to put safety chains on there. So the reason I'm adding more steel to this bracket is because I felt like there wasn't really enough material to support the bottom of this hitch. I mean, granted, it, it probably will be fine. It's probably plenty strong the way it is. But that wasn't good enough for me, and I felt like it'd be a good idea just to add a little bit more steel. And I don't plan to add steel along the whole length of this bracket, just more or less about halfway. And it's going to go something like that. And I put a little bevel on there. It's not a huge bevel, but I'm thinking it'll be enough for me to get in there. And it really it doesn't have to be incredibly strong, but it just has to, uh, it, you know, just anything I do from here on out is just added strength to this thing. So, because I have that bevel and I'm mostly going to be welding on that one side, there's two options. Or, well, the proper way to do this, I suppose, would be to put a backing strip, but I'm not going to do that. What I ended up doing is I have a little box where I keep little pieces of scrap metal, you know, just cut off ends and stuff that you never know when it's going to come in handy. And I just welded a little piece of that scrap metal on the back side, and that's basically more or less my backing plate. So just going to line this up here. I've already ground down on the back side a nice smooth shiny surface so I'll get a good weld here. And I'm going to weld the back side of that little piece of scrap or my backing plate. And the idea behind that is when I weld along this side, which is again is going to be my majority of the welding, it's not going to want to flex or, or go in the direction of the weld or warp rather. So. I need to weld this backside and then I'll start welding this mainstream here and enjoy the video. Okay, so these two added support pieces are welded on there and my 7018s are definitely coming along but then again it's a lot easier to weld flat but if I knocked uh, knocked a little bit more of the slag off there hit it with a wire wheel I'm sure it would pop a bit more uh, these pieces are a bit thicker than the lower pieces so that's why there's kind of that overhang right there so anyway those are good I'm gonna leave those pieces on there because they're not doing any harm because uh, the way I cut the bevel I had to put that one on the outside too but nobody is ever going to see that so the next thing I need to do is I'm just copying the design of the old hitch and basically what I need to do is well well, I have these uh, square pieces of steel obviously and I'm welding two of them on here and that's going to raise this up it, it probably raises it up a quarter inch so these are probably eighth inch plate 
and these were just punch outs that we got with an old welding table we got a while ago but anyway I need to raise up the hitch so it's uh, flush with this main cross member and then what needs to happen because this is the underside I need to take a piece of plate welded onto the main cross member as well as these step up squares and then I need to cut out two holes for the safety chains and then I need to put two of these on the other side and weld a piece of plate down there too but no holes because safety chains don't go on the top and I'm gonna take you out to the van just so you can see what I'm talking about here so yeah that that's pretty much what it looks like this would be of course the orientation of how it would go on the truck but if you notice on either side uh, the people that manufactured this hitch had the ability to put these uh, bends in the bracket here that of which I don't have the means to really do that uh, so that's why I'm using little square pieces of steel to step up the height of that hitch so that way I can just put a flat piece of uh, plate on top and of course probably gonna go back and use the uh, plasma cutter to cut out those holes for the safety chains and then we should be on our way and more or less that should be pretty much it with the rest of this welding I don't know I'm, I'm really comfortable or I really like welding these 7018s so I think I'm gonna stick with that and I hope they come out good looking you know I don't really want to use up my MIG gas my argon co2 gas and solid core wire uh, just these 7018s they're 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 cheap cheap to use and I don't know it's just really convenient it's it's just stick and go which I, I really like so I think I'm gonna keep on with that and uh, keep getting some more practice in here so enjoy the ride I love it when a project's going together well. You know, now that I said that, I probably jinxed myself, and when I go to mount this on the underside of the truck, none of the bolt holes will line up. Everything will have shifted, but now nah, I'm, I'm pretty confident everything's going to line up well. So, okay, so in order to cut out the proper size plate that I want, in addition to having the safety chain holes that I wanted, I made this simple draft. And this is just on the box of a Red Baron pizza box. Uh, of course I gotta cut this out and I'll use this pretty much as a template so the dotted line signifies what is going to be underneath the piece of plate these holes I drafted them with an oval eye bolt and those are going to be the cutouts for where the safety chains are and on the top side I'm just gonna instead of doing these safety chain holes I'm gonna follow this line and I'm just gonna do a cutout right there so you're going to have one piece of plate that is going to follow this outline for the top side and then one piece of plate is going to uh, take the whole rectangular form and is going to have these bolt holes cut out and that's going to be the underside. So that's the plan. Let me try and find a piece of plate this big because this is uh, pretty big, six inches or so. Okay, so good news and bad news. Good news is 
This thing is completely finished now. Bad news is I didn't get the rest of it on film. Just came out. It's humid. Wanted to listen to music. Just wanted to bang it out. And it is complete. As you can see, I've also painted it. And in addition to that, uh, as you can see, it's raining outside now. But before the rain came in, I actually got underneath the truck and I just took a paintbrush and some rust-oleum, knocked off any loose rust I could find. And then I pretty much coated the frame. Uh, in the rear half of the frame, from the rear axle back to where the hitch is going to be installed, I was able to get uh, on the insides of the C-channel frame. But from the rear axle forward, I was just able to get the outside and I got anything else that was rusty. And I mean, we're, we're in the northeast here, you know. Rust is eventually going to win. We're just trying to delay it as much as possible. But anyway, let me take the camera off the stand here. You can get a better look at how this thing came out. Yes, I am wearing Dockers, which are kind of dress shoes, but they're slip-on leather shoes, and they're really comfortable, and uh, they're actually real leather. Got them at Sears, and I have not had any complaints about them yet. All I do is just put a little leather treatment on there when I need to shine them up, go out somewhere, and uh, they do a good job. So next thing i got to do is wait for this to dry, and probably in a day or two, go back outside and bolt this thing on here. Now, I initially, excuse the camera, being a bit shaky for a minute here, but I want to continue on this thought that I have. Yeah, so continuing on my thought, I, I thought initially that I was going to put grade 8 hardware in here because grade 8 is clearly stronger than, you know, grade 5, but uh, what I have, I already have grade 5 half-inch bolts, and I'm going to have 8 of them in total. And if you go online, you can actually look up the tensile strength of these bolts. So I'm looking right now, half inch coarse thread grade 5. Let's give it the benefit of the doubt. Let's say it was even grade 2, which I'm not sure what grade these bolts are. But a half inch grade 2 bolt load strength is 7,800 pounds. So let me do a quick amount of math here on my handy dandy calculator, 7800 times grand total of 8. So in theory, in order for that to snap off, you would have to put 62,400 pounds of load on the back. And clearly the, uh, the frame of the truck's going to give out before those bolts are going to give out. So I think 8 grade, even grade 2 bolts, again, I'm not sure what they are, but that's going to be plenty strong for this. Uh, obviously, I'm going to put some lock nuts on there and make sure I torque these down real heavy. And that's about all there is to it.